When I opened the front door, there he was, Oliver, wearing a flashy leather jacket and sunglasses. It had been years since I'd seen him, and now he was barging into the house without hesitation. His audacity was shocking. Behind him stood a young woman holding a baby. Who on earth could she be? As if reading my mind, Oliver spoke up. This is Stella, my girlfriend, and the baby is our child, Hazel. I was dumbstruck by this barrage of bewildering news. Then he dropped another bombshell. I'm handing over the daughter, so get a divorce and leave. What? It took me a moment to comprehend his words. How could anyone think like this? My daughter, Clove, stared at me in disbelief. Then she said something unexpected. Divorce is not an option with mom. Her next words made Oliver and Stella pale. My name is Luna Smith. I'm a 50-year-old employee living with my high school daughter, Chloe. Though I'm not a single mother, I have a husband, also named Oliver, who is 50 years old. However, we are not living together, and I don't even know where he is. Oliver disappeared a few years ago. He just left one day and went missing. I did everything I could, asked friends and acquaintances, filed a missing person report with the police, but to this day his whereabouts remain unknown. I had come to terms with the idea that Oliver was probably never coming back. Our marriage was already strained and divorce seemed inevitable. Just when I thought it was time to live a modest life with Tlo, Oliver suddenly returned, revealing one shocking truth after another. I could only be astounded by the twists life can bring. But before I dive into Oliver's story, let me start with mine. I lost my mother when I was young and was raised by my father. He was strict but kind, always caring for me. Don't hold back for dad's sake. Do what you love. I remember him saying that with a smile as if it were just yesterday. Thanks to him, I was able to dedicate myself to my studies without any worries. After landing a job, I worked hard and whenever I had time, I traveled with friends or enjoyed my hobbies, living a fulfilling life. Before I knew it, I was already 30. Just when I was starting to feel a bit anxious about marriage, Oliver appeared before me, introduced by a friend. Oliver was the same age as me. He was a bit of a show-off, but he knew a lot of fun things to do and always seemed to be enjoying himself. Gradually, I was drawn to the cheerful Oliver. After we started dating and he proposed, I decided to marry him. However, my father expressed his reservations about me marrying Oliver. I'm just worried about that guy was my dad's constant refrain. That's not true. He might seem a bit frivolous at first glance, but he's a kind and good person. You don't understand him at all. I would retort. Looking back, I realized my father was right. My dad, who seldom opposed me, clearly expressed his objection. If I had just listened to him, I might have had a different life by now. But time can't be turned back. Soon after, I found out I was pregnant. It was around this time that Oliver slowly began to show his true colors. Man, this bike looks cool. Hey, I want to buy it with my next paycheck, Oliver said pointing at a motorcycle in a magazine, smiling brightly. Lately, he seemed to be getting into motorcycles, spending his weekends tinkering with them. He started hanging out less, and I felt his spending was getting a bit reckless. What are you talking about? You already have one. Think about our finances. Our child is going to be born soon. Yeah, yeah, man, you're so nagging. Oliver responded with a bored expression. Lately, Oliver's attitude hadn't been great. I wondered if it was just my imagination, but it felt like I'd become his second or third priority since we got married. Maybe we were just going through a rough patch. I thought of it lightly, uh, realizing a terrible event was about to unfold. Wait, what's with this bike? I was shocked and blinked in surprise when I saw a shiny new motorcycle in front of our house. I went ahead and took out a loan to buy that bike, Oliver said proudly. How about that? Cool, right? I was furious, never thinking he'd actually buy it. But Oliver, unfazed by my lecture, immediately started taking care of the bike. 
I was utterly dismayed by his selfish actions, especially now when I wanted to save as much money as possible for our coming child. Rubbing my belly, I muttered complaints to myself. A few days later in the evening, while I was preparing dinner, Oliver called. He was supposed to be out riding his motorcycle, but something must have happened. When I answered the phone, Oliver, with a trembling voice, started to say something terrifying. Luna, something terrible has happened. I was speeding a bit and hit someone. What? My mind went blank. Apparently, the other person was unconscious and he had hurriedly called an ambulance. Oliver seemed to be slightly injured as well, but the situation was unclear. Let me know when the ambulance arrives and the hospital is decided. I'll come too, I said, hurriedly hanging up the phone. Once I arrived at the hospital, I looked for Oliver. He was in the waiting room, talking to the police. He had a bandage on his knee from a scrape, but other than that, he didn't seem to have any injuries. I joined the conversation and got information about the other party involved. The victim was a young businessman named Luke Jones. His parents and wife arrived with pale faces. His condition seemed to be quite severe. Soon after, a doctor came out of the operating room. The moment I saw his face, I guessed the outcome. As expected, the doctor announced that Luke had just passed away. The wife's screams echoed through the hallway. After that, it was like hell. Oliver was immediately arrested and was going to prison for a traffic-related offense. Luke was crossing the street at a green light when Oliver, speeding and running a red light, hit him. The fact that Luke had died made it a particularly malicious accident. What's more horrifying, the motorcycle wasn't insured, so compensation to the victim's family was covered by the mandatory liability insurance everyone must have. But even after that, the amount wasn't enough. The rest had to be paid by Oliver. Oh man, this is bad. I don't have the money. Luna, can you cover it for me? Oliver's casual request infuriated me. What are you talking about? I don't have that kind of money either. It wasn't just about the money. I was astonished by Oliver's nonchalant attitude. He didn't seem to be thinking about the deceased person or their family at all. Traffic prison is a bit lighter than regular prison, lucky me, but still, I want to get back to the outside world soon. I want to catch up on my comics. He was too carefree by half. Since I got pregnant, Oliver's frivolous side had started to show, but I never thought it could be this bad. I was at my wit's end. That's when my father stepped in to help. I understand the situation. I'll cover the compensation. But there's a condition. Really? Oh man, that's a relief. Oliver quickly agreed to my father's conditions. So, my father paid the remaining compensation on behalf of Oliver. My father used to manage an apartment building and had some savings. Two years passed and Oliver was released from the traffic prison. Of course, his previous job had long fired him, so my father pulled some strings to get him a job at a small company. He had connections and a wide network from his time in business. That's why Oliver started to be more agreeable towards my dad. He was providing money and even got him a job. Oliver must have thought it was safe to follow him, but my dad saw right through Oliver's opportunist mentality. He kept a close eye on him to make sure Oliver wouldn't stray off the path again. You have a frivolous side. This accident was also a result of your personality. Are you seriously reflecting on it? Remember the victim and live an upright life, will you? Yep, I mean yes. I'll turn over a new leaf and do my best. Oliver lived humbly for a while. He took his job seriously and even took care of Chloe, the child that was born. He never missed visiting the victim's grave on the monthly anniversary of the accident. I once wrote a letter to the bereaved family and mailed it. It seems they had moved, though, and the letter was returned to me. At that time, Oliver truly seemed to be reflecting on his past and living earnestly. But as a decade passed, Oliver's facade began to peel away. Around that time, my father started feeling unwell and began visiting the hospital. After a while, he was diagnosed with a rare disease. 
he began a cycle of being admitted to and discharged from the hospital. Even when discharged, he could hardly leave the house. I ended up having busy days juggling caregiving and work. Fortunately, Tlo was in middle school by then. She was reliable and could handle most things on her own. She was about to enter her exam period, but somehow we managed to secure study time and barely make ends meet. During this time, Oliver's original frivolous and unreasonable side began to show. His spending became reckless, disappearing into hobbies and drinking. No amount of cautioning had an effect. It's my money, I can spend it however I want, he would retort getting even more upset. Then he started coming home late in the morning. Where on earth have you been? I would shout at Oliver, exhausted from caregiving as he returned home in the early hours, his face red from drinking. It doesn't matter. With Dad in that condition, he can't say anything to me now. It's a good chance for me to drink all I want and deepen my connections with various people. Man, it's so much fun. What are you talking about? You're not even looking after the house. I'm struggling with work and caregiving, and Shlo is having a hard time with her exams, and you're taking it easy? I couldn't help but scream. Oliver just laughed it off, saying, It's just a breather. I'm tired of playing the good husband. I hate being tied down by roles like being a husband or a father. I want to be more free. I was stunned by his words. I can't believe you. You're not single. We have a family, especially Chloe. She's still a minor. You're so annoying. The one time I come home and this is what I get. This is why it's so tiresome. Oliver exaggeratedly sighed, and then he left again. Taking advantage of the weekend, he roamed around, which I envied. I figured he would come back when he felt like it, but from that day, Oliver never returned home. At first, I thought he might be staying at a friend's house, but no one knew where he was. Reluctantly, I called his company. To my surprise, I found out he had resigned months ago. I was filled with disbelief. Where on earth could he be? The only place that came to mind was his parents' house. Originally, Oliver didn't get along well with his parents and rarely visited them. Still desperate, I called my mother-in-law, but as expected, she said, I don't know. He's not here. As a last resort, I decided to go to the police. I filed a missing person report, but in the end, his whereabouts remained unknown. It seemed there were people helping with his disappearance, but their exact location remained unknown. In the meantime, my father passed away. By the time Oliver disappeared, my father was already on a ventilator and could hardly communicate. I prepared for the funeral with tears, going through the motions. I felt incredibly guilty for marrying such a selfish man as Oliver, causing so much worry for my father. I was filled with remorse. There's another thing I regret. I had been planning to rebuild our house with my father's money. The plan was to demolish my father's old house and build a new, accessible home on the land. We thought living together would make my father happy, but that dream never came to fruition as my father passed away. I was so frustrated. Oliver's disappearance and my father's passing. It seemed troubles came in pairs. I was completely disheartened. The plan to build a new house had to be put on hold. It took years to gradually regain my strength amidst everyday life. Although my father had passed, I decided to build the house with the money he left us. After all, those of us who remain need to keep living. Eventually, the house was completed and Chlo and I moved from our previous apartment to our new home. Looking at our house, I felt a strange sense of peace wash over me. Even Chlo was smiling. There's no point in staying down forever. Let's start anew here. Just as I had that thought, something I never expected happened. One morning, the doorbell rang. Opening the door, I was stunned by who stood there. Oliver. Oliver had suddenly returned, wearing a flashy leather jacket and sunglasses. What the hell? How did you find this place? Asked, bewildered. Long time no see. Building a new house on your father's land, huh? That's quite the move, Oliver said, 
ignoring my questions as he waltzed into the house. Same old Oliver. Why are you just walking in? Where have you been all these years? Do you have any idea how desperately we've been looking for you? I demanded. Hey, don't be so mad. Let's all sit down and talk. Oliver began, taking charge as if nothing was amiss. Mom, who is this? Plo, sensing the commotion, paused her studying to come over. Oh, Tlo, huh? You've grown up, Oliver said. Tlo immediately scowled. She had seen up close how much Oliver had put me through and clearly harbored a deep dislike for her father. Her sharp gaze wasn't reserved just for Oliver. Following behind him was a young woman, causing Tlo to look suspicious. The woman, heavily made up with bright dyed hair and flashy clothes, was holding a baby and had a triumphant smile. I felt a wave of discomfort. Both of you, this is the first time meeting, right? This is Stella, my girlfriend, Oliver said, ignoring our surprise. Stella greeted us with a composed expression. Pleased to meet you. After disappearing for years, Oliver suddenly returns with a girlfriend in tow. It seemed insane, but then an even more appalling truth was revealed. Pointing to the baby Stella was holding, Oliver proudly said, This kid is mine and Stella's. Cute, isn't she? Her name's Hazel. A child. I felt dizzy, barely able to stand. It was terrifying how much common sense Oliver lacked. Was he really this bad once you got to know him? I managed to squeeze out my voice. You come here out of the blue with a girlfriend and a child. What's this all about? You should have done this after getting a divorce in the first place. Stop. Enough with the preaching. Can we talk about our situation? We came here today because we have a favor to ask, Oliver said, cutting me off with a hand gesture. He sat down as if he owned the place alongside Stella. Such outrageously unconcerned behavior. Their way of thinking was completely incomprehensible to us. How can we possibly listen to a favor from people as senseless as you two? Just get out now, Tlo shouted, her expression full of disgust. Then Oliver dramatically pretended to be scared. Oh, scary, scary. Tlo's getting more like Luna, not cute at all. Don't mock me. Tlo glared at Oliver and Stella. I put my hand on Tlo's shoulder. Tlo, let's calm down for a moment. I doubt it's anything worthwhile, but let's hear them out, I said. We couldn't let Oliver dictate our emotions. We had to stay calm. Realizing this, I managed to soothe Tlo, who looked ready to lunge at Oliver. Then we all sat down. What have you been doing since you left home? I asked, curious. Just before I left, I met Stella working at a club. She's young and cute, and we really hit it off. Oliver said, smiling at Stella. It was so creepy it was almost funny. So I told her about how my wife and in-laws were giving me a hard time, and she suggested I stay with her. So I did. What? Yeah, it was great. Stella isn't nagging like you. She's kind. Then we had a kid, and she told me I didn't have to work if I took care of Hazel. So I quit my job. A stay-at-home dad, you know. Oliver continued, unfazed by our stunned silence. Sometimes Stella goes to work in clubs out of town, so I'd go with her, living in different places all over the country. It felt like a vacation. It was awesome. No wonder we couldn't find him. Basically, Oliver was living off a younger woman. But with the kid getting to daycare age, we thought it was time to settle down, so we came back home. Then we stumbled upon you guys, followed you here, and were surprised to see this new house. You guys are living the good life, huh? Oliver rambled on, grinning. Though I tried to stay calm, it's tough dealing with someone so far removed from common sense. So, what are you trying to say? Asked coldly. Basically, we want this house. It's big and just right for us. I'll go ahead and divorce Luna so you and Shlo can just move out. What are you talking about? Oliver paused before saying, I'm giving up the daughter, so divorce me and leave. 
At this point, it was beyond understanding how someone could think this way. I was speechless, but Chlo unexpectedly spoke up. Divorcing you, Mom, is impossible, because Chlo continued with a cold expression. Did you forget about the promise to Grandpa? Ha! Huh. Oliver panicked at Chlo's words. Hey, what are you suddenly talking about? What? That accident? Stella looked puzzled. Even though you're his girlfriend, this man once hit someone with his motorcycle and went to traffic prison for it. The victim died. My father paid the compensation to the victim's family, but there was a condition attached. It was like this. I will cover all the compensation to Mr. Jones's family. In return, if there's an event that leads to the breakdown of my marriage with Oliver, I will reclaim the full amount from Oliver. Hearing my words, Oliver and Stella turned pale. Oliver must remember agreeing to those terms at the time, but he was probably too happy about the money being covered to remember the specifics. You left the house without permission, went missing without a trace, and on top of that, you got a mistress and had a child. That pretty much means our marriage is broken, doesn't it? But your father's gone now, right? Such conditions can't apply anymore, can they? Oliver was visibly flustered. Too bad, my father has indeed passed away, but did you forget we made a written note of it? So it has legal effect. If you breach that, we have the upper hand in a lawsuit, and there's more to the memo. If Oliver can't pay back the money, he must work at a day labor facility specified by my father, and the wages will be deducted from there. What? Oliver was speechless. He seemed to want to say something, but no sound came out. It was clear he didn't have the money. Oliver had always been the type to buy whatever he wanted right away and had no savings. Even now he's living off Stella, who works at a club. He must be broke. That leaves the day labor facility as his only option. But that's exactly what Oliver fears the most. After all, he was supposed to work at that facility after his release. It's a place where ex-convicts... Oh, where? Well, yeah, Stella has money. She's a top hostess, earns a lot, so paying that compensation is no big deal for her. Regaining his composure, Oliver began to laugh carelessly. Is that so? Well, as long as you repay it, it doesn't matter how. Anyway, that's the deal. Stella, you either pay or work the day labor. We'll talk about divorce after repayment. Can't let you loose, not knowing what you might do next, I said coldly. Oliver replied with a smirk, Ha ha, like I do day labor. Just get Stella to pay, and it's settled. I had completely forgotten about that old accident. Haven't visited the grave or thought about the victim's family since I left. Saying this, Oliver unbelievably joked. Then he turned to Stella. Right, Stella? You think the same, right? Stella. Stella had been acting strange, looking down in silence. Upon closer inspection, her face was pale and her lips were trembling. The next moment she uttered unbelievable words. It was you? Stella glared at Oliver. What's up? What happened all of a sudden, Stella? Stella suddenly raised her face, her eyes bloodshot as she yelled, You, you were the one who ran over my dad, Oliver. What? Both Tlo and I were shocked by this revelation. What did she mean? Stella began to explain. When I was five, my dad was hit and killed by a motorcycle that ran a red light. I was too young to understand anything. My beloved dad suddenly wasn't there anymore, and I lived through sad days. My mom became deeply withdrawn and said she didn't want to stay in this place anymore, so we moved far away. To protect me from getting hurt, mom hid the details and the information about the other party, so I never realized the culprit was Oliver. But you say the victim's family has forgotten. How could that be? I haven't forgotten a single day. I can never forgive the person who ran over my dad. We were astonished that Stella was the victim's family member from that accident. Oliver was panicking more than ever. But, but the last names are different, right? The person I get was a Jones. Stella's last name is Williams. There are many traffic accidents in the world. It's a case of mistaken identity. 
My mom remarried after my dad died. That's why my last name changed to Williams. Before that, it was Jones. My dad's name was Luke Jones. The moment she said that, Oliver turned pale. He seemed utterly disconcerted, his gaze wandering through the air, and he started sweating profusely. Meanwhile, Stella showed her hatred, to mock the victim's family and laugh it off. Unbelievable. That's the kind of person you are, Oliver. You wouldn't pay. Don't mock me. Stella, completely enraged, had bloodshot eyes, frightened by her voice. The baby Hazel she was holding started crying. However, she did not soothe her. In the silent room, only the baby's cries echoed. Oliver seemed to have lost the ability to speak, looking utterly vacant. Breaking the silence, I spoke up. So that was the story. Now, as for the continuation, Stella, about living with Oliver in this house. Are you kidding? I could never be with a man like that. Stella displayed a look of contempt. It was hard to believe they were once so in love, a man who ran over someone and destroyed a family. Chloe quietly interrupted Stella's outcry. You were about to do something similar, weren't you? The room fell silent again. Stella slowly spoke up. What? What did you say? I'm sorry for what my father did with the accident, but that doesn't give you the right to enter a deep relationship with a married man and have a child, does it? What you did might not be a crime that lands you in jail like my father, but in terms of destroying a family, it's the same. You were trying to take away our father, even though he's such a father. I didn't mean to. Stella seemed to realize what she had done, and her words faltered. Stella, I was shocked, too, when Oliver disappeared. Sure, Oliver was a terrible husband, a terrible father. He might have been different from your dad, but the feeling of a broken home is the same. You must understand the pain that Chlo and I went through. The momentum Stella had just moments before disappeared, and she fell silent. After a long silence, Stella started to speak in bits and pieces. After the accident took my dad, my mom, and I moved to a completely different place. My mom remarried, but I never got along with my new dad. I didn't want to stay in such a home and started hanging out more. Stella laughed at herself. I dropped out of high school and started working at a club. Working at the club made money, but there were many hard times too. I always thought my life was tough because my beloved father was gone, so I lived hating the person who took him from me. After pausing for a bit, she continued, Tlo, was it? You're right. I knew Oliver was married and had a child, but I didn't care. The other family didn't matter to me. I was resigned. But now I realize I've caused you and your family the same pain I felt as a child. Stella looked completely defeated. She had entered with Oliver confident and even smiling, but now she seemed much younger. She must be in her early twenties. With more than a twenty-year age gap, she was with a man in his fifties like Oliver. Was she seeking fatherly affection? After hearing Stella's story, the only plausible explanation seemed clear. A tear fell from Stella's eye as Hazel looked at her curiously. I'm sorry. Stella spoke through tears. I will raise Hazel on my own. I nodded, hoping she would reflect, start over, and avoid men like Oliver. With that settled, it was Oliver's turn. Your fate is decided. You'll be earning your keep through day labor, I said. Oliver, who had been silent until then, quickly objected. No, wait a minute. I can't last in such a tough place. At least give me something easier. I need a light job that ends at five. What are you talking about? There's no such place. Considering you already have a criminal record, you should be thankful there's even a place willing to hire you. That's it. Oliver let out a pathetic sound. Stella and Chlo looked at him with complete disdain. We've caused you a lot of trouble, Stella said as she stood up. Chlo had a complex expression, but I met Stella's eyes and nodded, holding Hazel tightly. Stella left. After Stella was out of sight, Chlo murmured, Mom, are you sure? Shouldn't we have been harder on her? 
It's okay now. I believe those tears weren't fake. I was raised by a single parent, too, so I could somewhat understand Stella's feelings. She seemed to regret getting involved with a married man like Oliver, and I hoped she would live honestly and focus on raising her child from now on. That was my sincere wish. When I looked at Oliver, he didn't move an inch. He was completely drained, perhaps terrified of what the future held for him. Rightfully so. Oliver now had to atone for his actions over a long period. A few days later, I handed Oliver over to the facility director of the day labor center, a friend of my father. Please be careful. This man has developed a habit of taking it easy, so he might slack off or attempt to escape, causing you trouble. No worries. We're used to handling such individuals. The director laughed heartily. The place was filled with ex-convicts like Oliver, whose families had given up on them. Escapes were not uncommon, but the staff, experienced in security or related to the police force, made it difficult for the workers to escape. Within the facility, newcomers were at the bottom of the hierarchy and worked hard. I hoped that being physically and mentally trained here, Oliver would truly become a decent person this time. As for me, I had already filed for divorce. Initially, I planned to divorce after the repayment was completed, but the wages earned from labor were lower than expected. Therefore, I arranged for Oliver to borrow money from a consumer finance company affiliated with the facility, repay me in full, and then repay the finance company. As a result, a significant amount of money came into my hands. However, this money was originally my father's, I wanted to use it for something my father would have done if he were alive. With that in mind, I donated part of the sum to an organization for children who lost their parents in traffic accidents. I hope to reduce the number of people who suffer from such sadness. My father would surely have done the same. Remembering my loving father, I teared up. Years have passed since then. I continue to work as usual. Tlo has become a university student diligently studying to obtain a difficult national certification. Unlike Oliver, she is a well-grounded person. Despite everything that has happened, it's good to see her grow up well. Reflecting on the tumultuous days when Oliver was around, I truly feel this way now. I'm just thankful for ordinary days. Being able to live a peaceful life is more precious than anything. I hope this tranquility lasts forever.